Okay, this is a quick video to show you how to use the mixer control panels. I'm going to go through how to start up the machine from switching on the isolator. So to start with, we switch the machine on. Some of the instruments have to initialise themselves, but once they've done so, we can see this is the starting position for the mixer. The screen at the moment is telling us a number of things. It's telling us that it's mixing in the auto cycle in slow speed. This sequence here will tell us what part of the sequence it's in once the sequence is running. The red light tells us there's a problem and we have to reset the machine. Make sure there's no emergency stops in and press the start push button and the green light should light to show us that the machine is now healthy. To begin mixing an auto we need to first start putting products into the machine. That's done quite simply by using this switch. The time the switch is, is open is the time in which the valve is held open so product will be flowing into your machine until we close the valve again. The product inlet valve is this one just here and if I begin to open the cylinder that valve is now opened and product is going into the mixer. On the screen it now says that the sequence is filling okay and that sequence will continue to fill until the valve is manually closed by your operators. The mixer cannot tell how much product is in there but the light is also automatically put on in the mixer so the operator can see what the fill levels are. When I put this switch back to the closed position the machine will begin the heat sequence automatically. The inlet valve, the machine is now in the heating sequence as can be seen on the screen. The steam valve is open and the machine is starting to heat up. What we can see down here is the temperature controller which is telling us what the set point is of the machine and what the actual temperature is at the moment. We've used a simulation temperature of 60 degrees to show the machine heating up. So the machine is now starting to heat and as soon as we reach that 60 degrees centigrade the machine will stop heating and go into the vacuum sequence. Let's just watch that while it heats up. Okay so we're now approaching the uh, temperature which we need to reach which is 60 degrees. Um, as soon as we reach that 60 degrees there'll be a half second delay before the computer switches over and it goes into the vacuum sequence. Cool. At this point the steam valve will be shut and the exhaust valve will also open. Um, the vacuum will start and we will begin to drop the temperature out of the machine. I've set the vacuum temperature to 40 degrees so as soon as this uh, actual temperature reaches 40 the vacuum sequence will stop and we will automatically open the V2 valve which will empty the products from the mixer. So the temperature is now approaching 40 degrees when that happens the vacuum sequence will stop and we will be told that the batch is complete. The mixer valve has now opened at the bottom of the mixer and the product will drop into a vessel or, or whatever you need to uh, empty the product into underneath the mixer. That valve will remain open until we restart the automatic sequence. The sequence is now complete, the product has dropped out of the mixer and what we need to do is restart another sequence. That's very simple to do, all we need to do is press the stop push button and then press start again and we will go back into another auto sequence. If I do that you will see the V2 valve underneath the machine close again. So now all the valves are set back to the original positions and by pressing start I initiate another auto sequence and we have to do the same again. Fill the machine with products and the sequence will carry on as we've just seen. 
So to go into manual mode, which is the other way of operating the mixer, we change this switch to the manual position and we see on the screen that it tells us that mixing is now in manual and we can use the function keys, which are actually these keys at the bottom of the screen here. There is a, a description here of what they do. Of course, we'll replace this with some much better labels once we've confirmed the specification. For example, pressing function key F1 will open valve V2, which is at the base of the mixer. If I press that key, we can hear the valve open, and the valve is now open at the bottom of the mixer. If I press function key F6, it then quits that instruction and shuts the valve. Function key F2 opens valve V3. If I press that key, the valve is now open. If I press F6, it shuts the valve again. You can hear it shutting. F3 runs the mixer in fast speed. And if I press this key, you'll hear the motor start. Pressing F6 cancels that request. F4 runs the mixer in slow speed. Again, we can start the mixer up. F6 to cancel. Function key F5 will run the vacuum pump, which we're only going to do for a short period because it will run dry. But you can hear the pump running. All those functions allow you to run the mixer in manual mode. And again, you can put product into the machine by opening valve V1. In manual mode, it is, as it says, manual. These combinations of keys can be used together. You can run fast and open valve V2, for example. Pressing the F6 key will cancel all those instructions. So in manual mode, you do have to understand that perhaps if you open valve V2, product is going to be released, so on and so forth. So, so in the auto cycle, we're able to run the machine either in fast, by the F, or slow, which is denoted by an S. And to change that, it's fairly straightforward. If you press the stop push button for five seconds, the screen will change. Okay, and it comes up with this instruction, data memory. Okay, what we need to do is to change the data memory value to one or to zero depending on what we want it to do. Zero is slow and one is fast, okay. By pressing F2 I can change that to a one, press enter and then by pressing the start push button I go back to the main screen. So it says it's in auto and in fast. If I just repeat that sequence and change that back to a zero, we should go into slow speed. Press one, and it changes to slow. Okay, that's the simple operation of changing slow and fast speed. Okay, again we've got some um, temporary labels to help us commission the machine. You'll see this one is, is V1, the product inlet valve. Again, it's to your specification, standard steel 316, three inch inlet valve. Again, at the moment, the valve is closed. Of course, it opens to let the product in. That's valve V1. Down at the bottom of the mixer, this is valve V2, the cooked product outlet. Again, as you've seen it operating whilst we've had it running, opening this valve at the bottom will release the product out of the mixer. Moving around the machine, we have valve V3, which is our vacuum braking valve. Again, this to the specification is a one and a half inch valve. Okay, stainless steel 316, normally closed valve. We then we've got the exhaust valve V4. Again, to the specification is a four inch diameter stainless steel valve. And then finally, down at the bottom here, we've got the steam inlet valve V5, which is, as it says, a bronze. According to the steam cons consumption, this will allow the steam to flow into the mixer. We've also got V6, which is the regulation valve, which is manually adjusted to suit the pressure of your steam and the availability of your steam plant. Finally, we've got an isolation valve on the inlet to actually isolate the machine 
from the incoming steam supply. Also the machine is to your specification electrically so that 400 uh, volts three phase is required to the control panel and all the other devices, contactors are 230 volts and the valve control solenoids are all uh, 24 volts as fired by the PLC. Okay, so the second mixer panel is identical to the other mixer, so all the functions you've seen on the screen and operating the push buttons and the temperature controller are exactly the same. There is no difference whatsoever. Okay, there is a slight difference in the um, construction of the machine. For example, up here is valve V1, the product inlet, again to the specification, three inch inlet valve. This is actually valve V2 which drops the product at the base of the mixer. The actual mixer valve goes right through the middle of the mixer and drops it out of the bottom but the valve itself is up at the top. Over here we've got the vacuum braking valve V3 again same specification one and a half inch bore normally closed again operated by the PLC. Further around this side we've got the exhaust valve V4 a four inch stainless steel valve, again, very same specification as the previous machine, and here is valve V5, the steam inlet valve, which is controlled by the PLC, V6, a manual regulation valve, and then the manual isolation valve to isolate the incoming steam supply. Here's the vacuum pump and the vacuum motor. Again, we've mounted them locally onto the, the plinths for our testing purposes. But of course, if you're going to um, site the, the pump some distance away, we can provide a longer cable, pre-numbered, pre so that it will only need to be wired into the control panel, putting the numbers to the terminals, uh, which we can uh, provide photographs for you when you come to install it.